En el MIT, la prestigiosa Universidad Australiana, se están realizando proyectos que combinan arte, diseño, ciencia y tecnología para terapias de rehabilitación, un proyecto revolucionario que mejorará la vida de numerosos enfermos con lesiones cerebrales. Te invitamos a conocer el proyecto desde sus orígenes y a pensar sobre las nuevas posibilidades que se abren en el mundo de la rehabilitación. My background is in uh, architecture and design and over uh, a number of years I've been sort of working more in the arts, uh, science and te technology uh, field. Um, and in the work that I do it combines sort of art, uh, arts and design uh, with neuroscience and psychology, uh, with technology which is uh, geared towards uh, rehabilitation. Uh, so this is uh, movement rehabilitation for uh, people who have had a brain injury or, or stroke. Um, so over a, a number of years when I, I started uh, these kinds of collaborations, um, which started in 2005, um, for us it was, for me it was about finding that sort of common language between arts, design and science. Uh, and we started a, a, a project where I think in the first year we spent, uh, we would have spent the first year just uh, sort of working out what each of each um, discipline did and trying to find that, that common language. Um, and so from there, um, over a period of 10 years in, in my research, um, we sort of developing um, uh, work which combines uh, these different uh, disciplines. Uh, and I think with the, with the people that I work with, there's a sort of common goal uh, to work out how we can come together uh, and, and create something that neither discipline on their own can create. Um, and so that the outcomes are somewhat more amplified um, when you, you come together with different disciplines. So the way that I work is that um, uh, for me it's a sort of two-way transaction between uh, the sort of arts and the science. So it's, it's maybe not necessarily an artist uh, going into a science lab to develop an artwork. Uh, but for me, I think it's more uh, about how the arts can inform the science uh, and how the science can inform the art and, and to actually move uh, those disciplines forward. So I think design, art and design have uh, a lot to offer uh, uh, in many areas uh, of science. Uh, and in my, my field, it certainly had a, quite an impact uh, in, in the science and changed how they think about ways of um, uh, doing rehabilitation, which is uh, the area that I'm, I'm working in. Uh, and likewise, this, the, the science has had a sort of made me rethink uh, about the ways that we, we interact with, uh, with technology and, uh, and how, uh, how we can uh, improve the technology with a much more sort of human uh, a, a dimension uh, to it. So, um, so that's uh, yeah, that's sort of uh, I think with the arts and science, I think it's it's finding out that sort of common uh, common language and then being able to uh, and and which is very hard actually to do, which is to be able to work out how you can uh, uh, intervene in both the, the, the science and the, and the practice that you're working in. Uh, so that, that has formed um, the uh, research laboratory that I, I run at RMIT University, which is called Creative Interventions, Art and Rehabilitative Technology. So it's really about combining uh, those uh, disciplines of art, design, technology, and how it's applied in allied health uh, practice. Um, so, going back a little bit further, um, uh, I was working in a, a, a facility at RMIT University, which was a, a virtual reality uh, centre. Uh, and this, is a, this was a sort of, a, n not virtual reality as, as we currently know it, as with the, with the headsets, but um, this was a, a, an immersive, uh, large format display. Uh, which projected um, real-time 3D graphics 
um, on a sort of large curved display and this was used for a number of, of purposes such as um, architectural simulation or uh, biomedical modelling. Um, uh, so a whole, um, a whole range of activities happened there. Uh, so in, in 2005 the university was uh, approached by uh, uh, someone who had, had, had suffered a, a traumatic brain injury um, and they were interested to see if anyone uh, was researching uh, the, the applications of, of virtual reality in, in rehabilitation because it was, a, it was an area that was just starting to emerge in the US, uh, primarily from the, uh, from the military actually, uh, in terms of rehabilitation of people who'd suffered from injuries uh, in, in, in the army. Um, so that started the uh, collaboration with a uh, colleague um, uh, who at the time was at RMIT. He was in the area of um, uh, psychology in the, the School of Health Sciences. And uh, so RMIT uh, sort of mat match made um, to see if there was a, uh, an interest in, in the collaboration. Uh, in that, at that time, I was developing uh, interactive uh, artworks using this technology with a number of collaborators um, and we were looking to see how we might apply uh, some of the uh, sort of interactive art as a way of uh, engaging uh, uh, and patients in in therapy so that's the sort of where we started mm -hmm. from uh, and that took a number of uh, it took about a year of, uh, of lobbying the government's uh, uh, organizations in Australia to say, well, look, this might be an interesting collaboration where we have sort of artists and designers working with um, uh, health sciences. So we, that's where our starting point uh, was. And we, um, so over the, a period of about three to four years, we developed uh, our first uh, project, which um, uh, is called Elements, and it's uh, an interactive uh, tabletop display where uh, the patients can manipulate physical objects uh, on the on the display uh, and they're practicing some very basic movements such as reaching grasping sliding placing uh, objects around the display um, and these are some of the um, uh, the movements that patients who have had a stroke struggle with and they can be very painful to perform uh, and sometimes they're unable to perform these, these simple, uh, for us, uh, simple actions. Um, so that was, uh, that was the, our first project where we um, were able to uh, design and develop uh, the system and we had a suite of, a set of uh, sort of game-like sort of activities but we also had a series of exploratory sort of creative uh, tasks where the patients could explore how to make sounds uh, with the objects, um, they could draw and paint, they could create sort of abstract visuals using using the objects and moving them around the display. So they, they essentially had a sort of free play. Uh, and we could tell from some of the early results that they were um, highly engaged in the, in the um, using the system. And in fact, the sort of the best form of uh, therapy is when you don't actually realize you're doing it. So the patients would spend a considerable amount of time just, just playing uh, with the system. And, and, and by doing so, they were practicing some of the movements that they were trying to, to the, the, the occupational therapists were trying to get them to relearn um, how to do it. Um, so from that, we, we decided to, um, uh, see if we could apply the same technology but in, in a group setting. So how, how might we uh, create a system that facilitates uh, group-based therapy so that the patients can uh, both watch each other perform certain activities on the table, uh, the interactive table. Uh, so this led to the development of our second project which is called Resonance. And we wanted to explore how, um, uh, how we might facilitate group-based therapy. So we used the same interface, but this time we wanted to have groups of patients working together 
to practice some of the uh, movements uh, that they're, they're relearning. Um, so the idea there was that patients would be face to face, they could see each other perform the tasks and in some way that's what we call vicarious learning where just you learn through observation of what others are doing. Mm -hmm. um, so we created a, another set of tasks this time around which was around collaboration, mm -hmm. cooperation um, and, and competition. So we thought we'll try sort of different sort of modes of interaction between the, the patients. Um, and again, this is, well, we're, we're currently in, uh, uh, testing this in, mm -hmm. in, in various hospitals around Australia. Um, and the preliminary results are promising. Um, and so, that, so we've been able to sort of extend it from sort of single user uh, experience for the for the patients to uh, to a group based activity. I believe so. <laughs> um, I mean, we can see that we know that games as a as a medium is uh, it's very compelling. It's very engaging. There's, it's a bigger industry than than Hollywood now. It's um, and so I think if we can use and develop these sorts of technologies, game technologies, uh, for activities like this, which are intensive, uh, and we can assist patients to maintain their engagement in their therapy because it's a real it's a real problem um, for patients to stay motivated for a whole variety of reasons um, so if we can maintain their engagement for longer uh, in their rehabilitation then uh, the outcomes are far far better for the patient Certain patients are not able to use it, depending on the severity of the, their injury. Um, but we have found uh, very recently that a number of people have found it an interesting interface to use. So quite recently we collaborated with a uh, music uh, composer, uh, James Hullock, who's, who's in Melbourne. Uh, and he, he saw the potential of the interface uh, um, for a, a performance that he was developing with a group of musicians with uh, intellectual disability. So we, we, this was unanticipated at the time and, and so we worked with James for a year to customize the table uh, with sounds that the, performer, the performers, who were called the, the amplified elephants, um, we developed the table so that they could perform to a live audience um, in front of a, an orchestra. Um, so this was quite a, an un, unexpected and, and really exciting uh, uh, opportunity for us. Um, and we could see that there was a high level of engagement from the, um, uh, from the audience as well because we, after the performance we let the the amplified elephants show the public how it worked, so they had a sense of uh, they could do something that uh, people in the audience couldn't. So they were able to sort of show and demonstrate how it worked, uh, and we let people play with it for an for an hour after the show, and you know people were about three deep trying to have a have a go and and play with with the resonance table. Um, so from there we thought, well, okay, let's let's sort of see. Who, who, wants, who might be engaged with using something like this. So we took it to uh, uh, so the Sonar uh, Music Festival uh, in Barcelona. Uh, we had about four and a half thousand visitors come through and uh, play with uh, resonance over, over a three-day event. Uh, and the response we, we got was, was phenomenal. So we um, so we've been uh, developing it further for other performances. So another, we had another performance with the Amplified Elephants, but then we also developed it for another performance uh, for uh, other musicians uh, to use. Uh, and that resulted in, a, in another perf uh, music performance, uh, which was under a, uh, a dome projection system, a sort of planetarium type projection system, uh, where we had a number of percussionists around the perimeter of the dome uh, and the musician playing the table and the, the, the visuals being reflected on the, on the ceiling of the, uh, of the display, of the dome projection display. So we found that we've been able to 
uh, go from a very clinical application all the way through to uh, uh, arts uh, uh, and disability uh, sort of areas. Uh, and so the future for us is um, if we combine these areas where we know that we have community participation from people with disability that can use this, and we know that it works in rehabilitation, our next step is logically is to see if we can actually combine the two, uh, community engagement and rehabilitation, so that we can actually activate uh, people who are undergoing therapy to be able to use technology like this in a performative way. And so that the outcome in a rehabilitation process might be that at the end of the rehabilitation, they can perform to a, an audience. So there's a sort of a, le a new level of rehabilitation which really is only starting to emerge as a, as a form of, of, of therapy. And in fact, uh, when we made a, a video of, of, the, um, uh, of the element system, we interviewed one of the mm. former patients who were using the system, and it was just amazing to hear them. It was a number of years after the trial, and it was amazing uh, to hear them talk about their experience using it and how it actually literally changed their life. A lot of the technology, I mean, the virtual reality technology started out in the sort of military industrial complex where this technology was used to simulate sort of battlefield conditions. So they have really large resources to invest in these sorts of technologies, but now it's completely democratized. I mean, the technology that started as virtual reality for flight simulators is now used in game technology that we see today. Yeah, so it's, uh, I mean, virtual reality is, is where you replace the, the, the senses uh, with a, simu a computer simulated um, simulation of, of the real world in most cases. Uh, and we're certainly seeing a, a resurgence of that technology through various VR headsets that are now available. Uh, so I think the next few years will be quite exciting to see where that technology goes because it's now in the hands of, of the public. Before, you know, 10 years ago, you had to go to a very expensive uh, facility to sort of experience this, this sort of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's something that you can go into your mobile phone shop and you can, you can buy it. So it's quite extraordinary to see the, how that technology has evolved over a number of decades, uh, where it's now in the hands of people. And it'll be interesting to see what people uh, can do with it, uh, both you know, creatively and, and, and other serious applications as well. But virtual reality uh, has been used in a number of ways, but uh, I think where it shows a, a lot of potential promises, uh, both in, in, in rehabilitation, in games, in creating other entertaining experiences, but it can also be used for other sort of serious um, things such as teaching and learning. So you can uh, experience a simulation of something that would otherwise be maybe uh, unsafe to do, or, um, uh, or you can experience something for example, I think there's one demonstration that I've seen which is around uh, exploring the, 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 you know, the planets, for example, or the, the solar system. And, and just the way that you can experience it in virtual reality is quite different from how you might learn it in the textbook. So it's a lot more visceral, it's a lot more, uh, the experience is a lot more stronger, and I think that the retention of what you can learn from virtual reality uh, is, much more, uh, uh, is, is much more powerful as a medium for, for, for learning. Mm -hmm.